And in first place is... restaurants and kitchens that inform the staff of health violations in regards to inventory management. The law requires that raw chicken must always be in the bottom of the fridge with pork and beef in the middle and fish on the top. Having too many violations has caused the restaurant to shut down, uh, which is why we created this app. And my friend Adnan here will tell you more about it. Um, can we get the screen up here for any chance? Cool. So this is Beef Over Chicken. Uh, what we have is a Vue.js front end. It's got TensorFlow running in the background, so it's a neural network uh, commonly used for tasks like speech recognition and image classification. Uh, what we wanted to do was give restaurants a flexible way for them to design their own neural network to classify their foods uh, in an easy and intuitive interface. So I'm gonna walk you through the process. We start off with a pretty well-trained network, and we want to establish what an empty shelf looks like. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. The, thanks. the uh, camera on the laptop is the one that will do the training. The other cameras around our box uh, will just use that constantly on the fly train network to classify things. So I'm gonna put this wood sheet here. And I'll give it a couple of different goes. So now we have an empty shelf. Uh, this is our one classification. The problem is I'm not an empty shelf. Uh, so that's not good. Uh, this is a hackathon, so I'm gonna say that I'm a hacker. And uh, so now it knows that I'm a hacker. <laughs> I'm a hacker. <laughs> but this is beef right. over chicken, so we couldn't just use raw meat. Uh, so we 3D printed these little guys because raw meat doesn't stay 24 hours very well. got some chicken, so we're just gonna tell them this is some chicken, and uh, yellow chicken. Cool, so just give it a couple of goes. Um, okay, sweet, so we can give it a little, uh, oh, 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 there we go, okay, so. Uh, Nacho over here is going to go start stacking stuff on the fridge. Um, and the reason why you can't put chicken above other meats is because it's got a higher cooking temperature. So it's against the law. If the uh, juice strips down on the beef, you won't be able to cook it out without burning the beef. And so everyone will get salmonella. It's a really big problem. So if you put beef on top and you put chicken on the bottom, uh, this is completely okay. This is kosher for a restaurant. Uh, the problem happens is whenever you put chicken on the top and you put beef on the bottom. Right, and so you got chicken over yeah. beef, right? And that's not good, we're beef over chicken. So <laughs> the only way that you can get rid of this, of course, is to pull this away. I didn't move the buttons because yeah. 24 hours is 24 hours, but uh, the only way you can get rid of that is to take the chicken off. 
Uh, if you look along the side as well, we have some relative humidity and temperature. That's coming from a Raspberry Pi. It's a Flask API microservice, and we're basically querying this uh, temperature and humidity sensor on the box every three seconds or so, so we can constantly keep it updated. Uh, what we wanted to achieve here was to segment out some of the burden that we're now putting on neural networks. Uh, they are really wonderful, but there still is a need for procedural understanding. Uh, and so we wanted to try and narrow down the actual purpose that the neural network is for, as well as kind of make a more rounded application uh, that we feel not only benefits just the restaurant industry, but we think the approach of offering an intuitive, easy to train network uh, can extend into all kinds of industries. Uh, so we wanted to try and rework the way. This is running completely in the browser, so. You can uh, run this on your phone without really any major issue. You can have the server in the fridge, and you can constantly just keep training your network better and better to understand what your food looks like. Uh, and so I want to thank everyone for your time. This has been an awesome, awesome 24 hours. Uh, thank you, the panel, for judging us. Uh, and I guess uh, I will save that 30 seconds and let you guys ask us some questions. All right. First of all, love the name. I was super excited to see what you guys were building when we heard that there was a company called Beef Over Chicken. You never know what you're gonna get. Um, but I also love the backstory of founders. And so what made you guys come up with this idea? Well, I've been working in the restaurant for a very long time, for many, many years. Um, I noticed that inventory management in most restaurants are still very archaic. And it's like, there's still a lot of pen and paper Still a lot of like manual labor, not manual labor, but more like a checks and balance type thing. People have to go in the fridge all the time and check and see everything. So I wanted a way to actually improve this and like bring technology into the restaurant. So we actually first, or actually I thought about an inventory management system that I would actually count like how many chickens, what's in my fridge and how many like jars of mayonnaise. But then as we kept developing this concept, we realized that the safety factor is, was more important than the convenience factor of counting these chickens. So um, not only was this problem a little bit easier to tackle, uh, but it was also just better in general for the well-being of the restaurant. And, and I can tell you a little bit more about um, why we chose this route. Uh, yeah, uh, so we originally did try to count everything. We talked about QR codes, uh, but for me, I, he's a fan of them, I hate them. Uh, it's one more thing that a restaurant has to purchase and maintain, and someone's got to print out the QR codes. Uh, we really kind of wanted something that could be done very easy and manageable. This runs entirely on the web. It can run on a mobile phone, uh, and QR codes just aren't that easy. Um, another thing, too, is counting is a really hard problem. Uh, it's in neural networks, it's a segmentation network, and you're not going to get it off the floor in 24 hours. So uh, we decided to kind of fight the battles we knew that we could win. Um, and I think all in all, I'm super happy with how it came out, quite honestly, so. It's good to know that you have some experience in this field. What percentage of restaurants, high-end and low-end, are not using this concept right now? Uh, actually, I've never worked in a restaurant that has a concept like this. Um, everything is um, just paper and pencil. It's like, I've worked at Disney World, and those people are still going in, um, like every, four hours to go um, check to see like the temperatures of the fridge and see that they're still making, um, that they're not failing. And this is, um, it's a concept called HACCP, which stands for Health Analysis Critical Control Points. And it's a fail-safe plan. It's like a backup plan for restaurants. So if anything goes wrong, um, they have a backup plan. So if the power goes out, the fridge dies, um, they know that they have to put the food on the ice or if the uh, chicken is on the wrong level, they know that to move it immediately to where it needs to be. Fantastic concept. Uh, what have you uh, looked at towards uh, scalability into like a larger walk-in freezer and being able to, to cover multiple types of shelves or you know a longer uh, linear area of shelf? Yeah. So ultimately, I think there's two factors to consider. One is webcams, right? You're going to need more webcams, which is a good thing because you can immediately tell where the problem is, right? Because it's going to kick off on an array somewhere, and you know exactly which shelf it is and which aisle, whatever. Uh, the other problem is training. Um, but it's not really a big one, uh, and I was really surprised. It's my first time to build something with TensorFlow.js, and it's really shocking how very few photos you need to get a really accurate model. And part of why we chose 
uh, the, the kind of dynamic on the fly route. Every kitchen counter is different. Chicken looks different from restaurant to restaurant. Maybe it's chicken parmesan, they just haven't baked it yet, right? And so you can't just say, well, let's get a model that's really good at finding chickens, because it's really on every restaurant. And so I think the great thing about, this is running in the front end, but if you very easily spin it up in a server, and then you can over time perfect your network, and it will get smarter and smarter, and it will get better at detecting your dishes and your plates. In terms of scalability, uh, you could run it a million times over. I mean, it's a, it's a mobile app. <laughs> He's cutting me off. <laughs> I don't have the Oscar music, but yeah. <laughs> well done. And first place, the moment we've all been waiting for. Another round of drum rolls. And in first place is Beef Over Chicken! Yeah, that's going on the resume. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>